Gundam.tk presents Age 2 Normal. Hey, what's up again, everybody? It's Robert, one of you for Two R's, Two B's, Gundam Reviews. Dot net and I couldn't be happier because it's time to put the Gundam Age 2 normal together and add another lead to the collection in the pantheon of Gundam history. Don't forget to check out the unbox and the parts where the details, some of these things are just incredibly awesome. Be careful though because some things seem to break so you might want to check that out. But in the meantime let's get this guy turned into mobile suit mode and transformed and see how he stacks up. So welcome to the club of Lead Gundam's Age 2 Normal, and what do you think about this guy? I've got to say, uh, my first impression is that this is an incredibly detailed high-grade model. Outside of the fact that the legs are incredibly plain, and so are the binders in terms of the coloring, if you just look at how many details there are in small color applications all over the place in 1 1 44th, it is fantastic, especially the details in the chest, the head, and the waist. However, what about it as a Gundam? I think it looks to me like a very strange Gundam in terms of mobile suit design, and it just sort of seems to have these big things just stuck on the shoulders for no particular reason. I think it does look dynamic and cool in some lights, and in other angles, not so much. So if people hated the old seat idea of just take a cool looking design and put an awesome backpack on it, uh, I don't know if you'd, what did you think about this with an okay design and just put on some so-so wings just falling off the shoulders. Posability now, where the skirts are not a detached, so they are going to be together. You could bring the legs all the way forward, and you can do the full splits off to the side, because the side skirts are going to get out of the way. Don't forget the ankles have incredible mobility. The upper body is going to rotate around, and you aren't going to be able to move this part, because that's just for the transformation, as you can just stretch this whole thing up. But that's neither here nor there at the moment. For the arms, you can spin that around, even though it's got those big binders on there. You can bring the arm across this much, so he's not going to be able to touch the other shoulder. As the binders whack the camera here, these can rotate out of the way if you want them to. And remember, the arms are going to give you a 135 and be able to rotate around with the wrists not moving double O style. Those are locked into place. And the head is just on a regular poly cap, so it's going to have limited, but pretty good mobility. For weaponizing, it's just a matter of turning that forearm guard there, and you can put on the shield on the other arm, but for this one, you're going to have to slide down the blue part, put the hand in place, and then you can slide this back up, but that actually seems to hold it in place very, very nicely. Adding a beam rifle always makes a Gundam feel like a Gundam, and of course you can fiddle with these binders and get them wherever you want, which can certainly make it look a little bit more interesting. It's only got one beam saber there in the back, but that shield, do you even notice it from most angles? I think it's just going to get lost in the shuffle. But the Dodds rifle is looking good at the Hyper Dodds because those two blue pieces really add to it and it's oversized and I think it's just the right proportions for this kind of high grade figure. Height comparison, father and son, father on the right, flit to Asano, and of course Asim piloted it for a while with the H1 normal, and the H2 normal is just huge in comparison, very similar to the way that Zeta was a lot larger than the RX-78 II. Very plain legs here, it doesn't have those little black details, the blue feet certainly stand out compared to the old classic red, and there's a lot of blue overall thanks to the hyperdods in the shoulders. But in terms of head height, I'd say that the H2 edges it with the V-fins and the actual top of the head, and you can just see how classic this one is in design, and how much grey shows through, and how much colour this one shows through. Even if you took those shoulders off, he would certainly be a very filled out and sleek, and much more futuristic, worthy of 26 years of development, I suppose. With the Sparrow being blue, it seemed like this would be a natural comparison here, but overall you can see that the Sparrow is just a little bit taller, although the pose that he's got his legs in are probably helping there, but you can just see how much less plastic there is in this guy, compared to the age 2 And here with the HGUC Jesta, but of course in my old silly recreations of Gundam Age, Captain Grudek, and I can't wait to see what's going to happen with him in the second generation. They better not let him rot away in prison. And people like to talk about all sorts of influences and what we've seen from previous mobile suits and what we're seeing in Age 2. It's a little bit surprising that people haven't brought up freedom even more, although of course freedom doesn't quite transform. For posing, you can go straight to the aerial, but I thought I'd start with a wacky ground pose here, just bringing the arm across. And here you're going to notice something where, because these binders are stuck on the shoulders, at whatever angle, if you've got the shoulders turned forward, then the binders have to go forward. And if you've got this arm back, 
then they've got to go back. So you're not going to have as many posing options as you think, but it still looks busy and yet somehow cool and yet, yeah, it's overall, it's not all that bad. Shooting the other way, you'll have a similar situation where if you want to bring that arm all the way and twist it forward, then the binders have to come with it. And again, if you've got that other arm going back, that shield really a non-factor and you never notice that race car spoiler. But again, it does look somehow strangely dynamic. The action base is going to work great, of course, for action poses there, especially up in the air. These side skirts aren't getting in the way at all, and overall he's very solid and he's going to get wherever you want him to. Here with the Dodds rifle back, you can have the arm legs, and you may notice that this part is all the way down, which is pretty cool the way that that can show off itself. And then that Dodds rifle, I'm pretty happy with pretty much every pose that I put him in so far, and the fact that he gets there and stays there solidly doesn't look much like a traditional Gundam, but certainly a new take on an old classic. So that's just a quick look at all the things that this guy can do, but he has really grown on me, and I really can't stress how well he just holds everything together. I can just imagine in Master Grade form, and I'm thinking of the Master Grade Double O Riser in particular, how there's just so many parts and how things don't want to go where they're going to go and they're going to fall down and weight issues. Whereas that was all avoided with the High Grade Double O Riser where just everything seemed to work. And I wonder if we're not going to have the same thing because so far, everything that I've done with this guy, it just seems to work and his visuals have really grown on me. Right now, these are sort of lined up in a ridiculous pose but I'm sure you could fix that up. And what about in terms of overall visuals? Is this too much of a change from the age one? Does it seem like a 26 year old, a 26 year time jump? Or are there too much changes? Or is this too classic in the old RX-78 two cents? And this a little too modern trying to attract the demographic that it seems age has been going for. Anyway, why don't you let me know your thoughts about the visuals, the time skip and everything else as some related generation one or generation two with a comment down below. Always love to hear from you. Stay tuned for the next part where I'll take a look at the transformation. But in the meantime, thanks as always for watching. See you next time. That's a lot of unnecessary bulk that you've got on your shoulders. Why, thank you.